Shalom, shalom, chavarim, shalom. This is Yadin. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafari, the Lion of Judah Mission, USA, yes, I, LOJ Society, right here. We got to address this pseudo, this pseudo stuff. This is some real pseudo. Everybody's using the term pseudo, which is good. I remember there was only a few of us, right, back in the days that really used that term and we had to kind of explain it to ones. But I guess one's got the explanation. But Let's give an example, an object lesson. This is a pseudo thing, Ethiopia or Abyssinia. Many ones and ones will tell you, well, Abyssinia is the original name of Africa. <laughs> or that Abyssinia is the original name of Ethiopia. The name Abyssinia is Abyssinia, Ethiopia is Ethiopia. We're talking about this territory. Now, this is a modern kind of Ethiopian thing, even native Ethiopians are getting up on it of this generation. The previous generation was on top of it. It's interesting how historical documentation has been suppressed, especially over the past. Let's see, when we first got into what was what's called, what was called then black consciousness. Now it's like it's a lot of clown circus. It's like a circus like Barnabas and Bailey, you know, the ones and ones out there. You know, with the, uh, <laughs> you know, pseudo black consciousness, though there's some very good topics and subjects that come up, but they've never really gone into properly. It's always based on either a host or somebody who's the host or who is like the Don King or somebody of those platforms there. You know, always weighing in and picking their favorites because they either are anti so-called Bible or anti you know, the so-called Judeo-Christian, Judeo-Coptic, or anti-Hebrew, or because they're anti-Israelite, because when we as black people make this claim and also show and prove, they dismiss it. They call us pseudo, but here's something very pseudo. Now, a lot of ones don't really have linguistic, um, linguistic science, right? I'm not looking at critical, you know, real critical textual criticism but linguistics is important for for this particular argument because otherwise you're relying on a second or maybe third or fourth hand opinions right and misopinions about this so here we look at this right here this is an interesting kind of a map we came across recently because of where africa is right where africa is on this particular <laughs> map and this is very much correct from a true view of ancient, you know, history, ancient documentation, ancient evidence proves that Africa, the continent, was never called Africa. So you hear a lot of these pseudo arguments about, you know, the Passover celebrates the, you know, genocide or killing or murder or whatever they want, whatever word they want to use to get into your feelings, you know, <laughs> took the chains off of the the you know hands and feet and put them on the heart and mind and then you just jump out the window with oh the pat because egypt isn't egypt in africa at one time no at one time no remember when you're hearing this first or at least one of the first that egypt was not in africa when we look at historical evidence and we look at the the road of history how do we get here there's a lot of anachronistic you know, anachronisms, they call it, that go on, right? When they talk about Africa and then we look at this whole content today. Yes, in today's, in today's um, social media, today's so-called academic, educational, today they, they basically buy into what so-called the white folks or the so-called European white folks. I say white folks because there's still a level of the whole black and white, even though they're trying to gray it up. Right? But we can get into the gray, into the gray area and get into the gray matter. But this is not a matter that's so much gray. Right now, here we see Abyssinia. You see what it's in this whole region is Abyssinia. Right? Well, we know that even the division of the continent, right, that is nowadays called Africa, is something fairly recent, at least over the past 400 plus years, 500, six, you know, depends on you know, not, not who you go to, but what sort of evidence you come across, because we found certain evidence where the content is called Ethiopia. But then the ones and ones will say, well, that's a Greek word. 
right? That's a Greek word, but they will hold to the Roman nomenclature, nomenclature's name of Africa for the whole continent and totally avoid that at one time Egypt was not in Africa. At one time Egypt was not in Africa. Check it. At one time Egypt was not in Africa. Of course, we're going to address that Abyssinia is not, right, is not the original name is not Ethiopia. Let's just put it like that. Abyssinia is not Ethiopia. <laughs> Habasha. And, and this is to the peoples, you know, to the peoples over there and today's people over there who are over here and elsewhere. You know, we know that they like to refer to themselves as Habasha. Even many in-laws, Zemedi, Zemedoche, like to refer to themselves sometimes as Habasha. It's a cultural thing. It's almost like we use the N-word. Right? The whole Habisha is like the, is the Habisha like the N-word? Let's take notes. Take notes of some of these subject matters. But Egypt, right? There was a time, at one time, Egypt was not in Africa at one time. Of course, we're going to say, oh, this is he's crazy. Because they're going to avoid the real historical, let's call it evolution. The evolution. Or the devolution, if you want to look at, look at it like that. But the evolution of names, nomenclature for places and people over time. So we may have an argument today, talk about, well, Africa. And we most of us know, yes, you're referring to the whole continent as we call it today. But then when we start to look into ancient facts, and a lot of these ones call themselves scholars, and they totally avoid that, just like the so-called European, whitewash, modern day, you know, um, White Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the system is still there. It's systemic, right? They talk about systemic racism, right? Well, this racism, I don't even call this racism. It's ignorance. It's really ignorance. It's really ignorance. Even the so-called racism is really about ignorance. <laughs> you know, the original sin, put this out there on the beam as well. The original sin in a realistic context is ignorance as well, right? But let's go on right here. So we have this. Now look at this map here. Here we have Abyssinia. You see what Abyssinia is? You see what Abyssinia is right here? Now, most ones who will say that Ethiopia right, is or was Abyssinia are working from certain classical so-called European scholarship, academic scholarship going back to roughly... Um, the 17th, the 17th century. Now let's prove this right here. You can see there's Ethiopia over here. There's Ethiopia there. There's, there's also Sudan there. And if we look at other maps like this, we see right here, Ethiopia inferior, Ethiopia superior. And there's a lot of pseudo scholars out there, you know, with daggers, but we're going to use broad sword, a broad sword, right? <laughs> the sword of Yahuwah, of Cha over right here 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 so we have ethiopia superior but you see right there abyssinia is there hmm right so this region that's known as abyssinia right where does this name come from now of course one's one that may be shifted around and say what about ethiopia ethiopia that's greek well remember we talked about linguistic science and linguistic knowledge being able to have the linguistics because looking at the linguistics, we can really understand how terminologies, right, that are indigenous, right, get grafted in or Frankenstein. Remember, English is like a Frankenstein language. Remember the Frankenstein movie? So how these words kind of come into the English language. There's so many examples of these other words and also names that come in, but slightly, they become slightly modified. You know, I mean, we have a lot of this here, even in the Americas, right? It's talking about North America, you know, the Caribbean, you know, and South America, also in Australia. Places, right, which have been what they call colonized or taken over or invaded and native people suppressed. But then they keep a little bit of the old people and then add a little bit of the new and what they either learned or stole or thieved or, or, or appropriated. You know, they basically incorporate in. So even today in America, a lot of names of places and other things, actually, if you start to study the etymology, they come from Native American things. But you always thought they were white people things or they were white folks things in the the form or deformity of it, yes, they become so. But here we have 1771, an accurate map of Africa, right, from the best authorities, according to J. Gibson. So they still are calling this a map of Africa, 
right? <laughs> Notice here, of Africa, right? Because if you really look at the etymology, when this word came into vogue and what was the ancient terminologies as we actually have showed you over here, this is a good kind of an overview, keeping some of the names we are familiar with, some of the more, when we say ancient, ancient, people say, what's ancient? Ancient is defined as anything being roughly a thousand, what, 1500 or so years or more, right? So 1500 years ago, that would be considered, quote, ancient. Even though we might use the terminology to something that was popping back in the 90s, that's ancient from our view of it. So let's understand words that we are using, make some sense out of it, and give some definitions, at least some context of how we are seeking to use these particular words so that people can hopefully come to a better understanding. So we have Sudan is way over here. We have Ethiopia over there, Abyssinia. Of course, they'll say, well, this is when the white man did not know so forth and so on. But it's interesting that he was coming across these things for himself and he was including it. Yes, yes. So here, 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 we have another map right here. This is 1858. So we just showed you 1700 something, right? And then also here where Ethiopia is in like the sub-Saharan region, you know, the Congo, like even more of the South Africa region. Notice down here it says unexplored region, right? So as Europeans and others were exploring things and they got a lot of the information, some people say from the Moors in Spain, but also that linked them to, you know, the Ottoman Turks, another Indo-European, the Hittites actually, Ottoman Turks are Hittite people. Right. And remember, the Hittites, according to the Bible, come from the Canaanites. Right. And the Canaanites come from the Hamites. And we know that science does prove that, you know, in the whole genetics thing. Right. How most human beings, if not all, in some contexts are related and how the lighter genes or the whiter genes come out of the darker or the blacker genes. Right. The whole theory of, of dominant, you know, genes. Right. And even was listen to one particular scholar was saying that how the sub-Saharan African peoples might have such a wide range of genetic diversity, but they all might seem similar in color. Right. That was a, you know, similar in complexion. Notice over here, there was the Ethiopian Ocean way over here. Right. That's where the Southern Atlantic Ocean is. Now, this is the map from 1665. Right, showing all of Africa being called Ethiopia, right? And the Atlantic Ocean was the Ethiopian Ocean. Now, ones will argue, and we, we note this argument, and we have a, a counter or a rejoinder for the argument. They will argue that, well, Ethiopia, the terminology Ethiopia comes from Greek. Now, there is some truth to that from the perspective of information linguistically that they are able to access. If you are able to access the linguistics of the people in the Horn of Africa, what's called Ethiopia, you know, what we, we may, may, may refer to as the Afro-Shemitic language, you know, the Gutters, the Amharic, the Tigra, the Tigrinya, even the Oromo, Oromifa, the Omotic. If you are able to access and use that in your investigations, you'll see something just like they said about sub-Saharan Africans having the widest range of genetics. It's like we have these things in our genes. You see what I'm saying? Even though we might still just look like so-called, as they would say, Negroes or Blacks or, you know, Africans, you know. But note this right here, the term Ethiopia, right, if you're coming from the academic scholarship where a lot of the scholars, black and other scholars, pseudo and more legitimate, authentic scholars will get their um, evidence or points of reference in, in going over critical thinking about scholarship today. What, what have we learned? We're not saying that the ancient people were always totally accurate, especially when viewed from our point of view to answer the questions that many of us may have today but it's clear here from the evidence right that the name ethiopia precedes see the africa comes from the roman side of the ledger and the ethiopia comes through right through we may have to say the same thing to africa africa comes through right the the roman side of the ledger and the term ethiopia comes through to us today from the Greek side of the ledger, 
right? And let's not assume when we say Roman and Greek, we necessarily just speaking about modern white people. Even that right there is an evolution, right, that we need to look into. And it's because the ignorance of so-called racism and pseudo-white supremacy that has covered up the real facts, right? Because there was a global agenda, right? The Anglo-American, European, white supremacy, whatever you want to call it, there was this agenda that was going on, right? So it's seeking to cut through that and trying to find out, well, what's the truth of the matter from our perspective? We, the black peoples of the world. So here... This is correct right here. Atlantic Ocean was known as the Ethiopian Ocean when? In the 19th century. That's interesting, right? But then they start to change the name of certain places. So they kept that going, right, in, in, different, in, different, in different maps. So we showed you the 17-something. We showed you 1665. This is just to reinforce that particular point where Ethiopia is here. We can see Abyssinia up in this corner right here. Now, they called it Abyssinia because of the influence at the particular times that they have, we would say the 1700s, you know, coming down from like the maybe 14, 15, and 1600s, the increasing influence by the Mohammedans, by the ones Moors, by Islamic and Arabic scholarship, and Ottoman Turkish influence, and other sort of um, influence that's very strong and prominent in the European, um, Europe, and, and, and English culture that influenced them. So the whole link with the Islamic slash Arabic. This is because the terminology is not an indigenous terminology, and we can prove that it was superimposed, right, from outsiders. That the people, even in the time they tell us that Abyssinia is the original name. So when we look at a lot of things, they'll say Abyssinia. Let's look over here. Interesting that Abyssinia is here and Ethiopia is there. Right, same thing with this map right here. Same thing with this. This is a very good map right here, but we're not going to focus on the maps right here. What we'd like to focus on, let's get this over here. Scroll through this right here, right around where is this right here? Right around here, this one right here. This is if you look it up, right? Abyssinia, the name Ethiopia was also historically called Abyssinia. Now, the way this is written is, is, is true. We will agree with that. Ethiopia was also historically called Abyssinia, but here it's putting Ethiopia as the name of the people called themselves, right? Not all of the people, but the, you could say, but the, 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 the ruling, um, I don't even put it like that because there's a whole other argument going on in Ethiopia with tribalism and, you know, different groups and old things that were going on and we're not really involved in that, but looking at it somewhat objectively, Right, we see that the predominating culture, right, of that particular region that was called by outsiders Abyssinia. Right? It's like we were called by others niggers, negroes, and we then we take up the terminology and we flip it, but then many of our scholars and we even know that well this is something that they imposed on us. This is the same thing with the term Abyssinia and Habasha. Ethiopia was also historically known Right, or historically called, excuse me, called. See, there's a difference. We say it was known as or was called, but in history, that means we can look at historical documentation and say, well, you see here, this is when it was called this. Now, notice, let's go on. Derived from the Arabic form of the Ethio Shemitic name, they say Habashat, Habashat, Martin Habesha, in some countries. Right, Ethiopia is still called by names cognate with Abyssinia, the Turkish Habes, Habesistan, right? Habesistan, you know, everything they call the Stan, Pakistan, you know, Turkmenistan, all these other stands, you know, so they call it Habesistan. Now, it's important to understand the Turkish, right, during the 1800s and the, you know, during like the 17 to 1800s, the role, the, the political movements that was going on 
as people were conquering people, whether in the name of their civilization, their religion. We had the Ottoman Turks with the whole Mohammedan thing. And this even comes down to Jerusalem and the so-called state of Israel. And then the British taking it and then the Balfour Declaration. You know, so we studied the history in its chronology as it comes down to us. So we can put things in perspective. The Arabic is al Habash or Habash, Habash. So in some of the Yemenis brothers and others that I, you know, know we speak a little bit of Arabic because Arabic is one of, it's my, one of my birth language. You know, one of the languages I was speaking, the main language I was speaking before English. So I spoke Arabic for English. So this kind of helps us to get an insight. And also, you know, growing up speaking English and knowing myself as a so-called black American or from one of say African American or more identified with Ethiopia from the long view. Right, the long view, the true view, right? But we have to address the wrong view, right? So, the land of the Habesh people. So, this is totally you notice the connection is the Arabic influence. So, as the Arabic influence back in that region was like the American or Europe or British influence in other parts of the world. That's why they use a lot of English terminologies, that's why they refer to themselves by a lot of English thanks because of this influence. Right. So we can find older documentation of the people who understood that people call themselves Habesha. They understood that identification outside, especially if we look to Arabia and to the north, to the Ottoman Turkish. That's that's where this terminology really rises up. And because the the white people or the Europeans right, were exploring and doing their thing. Right over the past 400 years, they adopted this. Right, so the Ethiopians themselves, right, and this term they use and identified. Now we can get into that whole argument where this term Ethiopia is a Greek, or we say it comes from indigenous. Right, it's an indigenous terminology that was identified by one of the most popular quote um, so-called historical writing culture, and that was the 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 Greeks from that early period of time who were not just so-called white people as we would always imagine them, right? But they were, it's like America, how America was taken over. There were other people there, like Australia, there was other people there, right? So as the Europeans took over that, these other people became less. As the Gracoi people took over the Ionian, right? And whatever remnants of the Minoan, the Keftiu, from ancient Egypt, the Keftiu people became less and less and less. So this is point to that as another reason in there. This is all right here to prove, right? To, to, to prove that Ethiopia, like, like right here, countries, countries name changes. So this is very deceptive. Then it was Abyssinia. But this is from the Europeans when the white people were coming into contact with people and were trying to, first of all, source out everything so they can know, well, well, well who are those people over there? So they went to the Arabs and the Mohammedans and even some of the Islamic ones and ones of Turkish. They got a lot of information from them because they knew these people had encounters. So they wanted to find out, like, before I deal with a new person, I want to find out, well, oh, you dealt with that person before? So if you dealt with that person before, see, this is, this is, this is also a very, very important word because we find that the word goes back, Abyssinia, this comes into the Oriental European scholarship. That's why you find it all over the place when you do your research from a Western Gentile and an English speaking perspective. You will find a lot of, you know, this is what you will find, you know, and that's understandable, right? But then there's a whole cognitive dissonance, right? In European uses, Ethiopia did not refer to the modern country of that name until the second half of the 20th century. You see what it says right there? In European usage, right, right? It was generally called Abyssinia, a term derived from the Arabic ethnic designation. So the Arabic people, Ottoman, Turkish, Mohammedan people, this is what they refer to. We can trace it all back even to the Quran as well, right? As a result, the Eastern Semitic, uh, the Eastern uh, South Atlantic was commonly dubbed the Ethiopian Ocean. So this right here, right, let's go right here. In the early modern world, European geographers generally called Ethiopia 
in the unknown, right? Located Ethiopia in the unknown to them, the African interior. So this kind of brings it down and does give a lot of good historical facts as the last two, especially in European usage, Ethiopia. So what happened is that historical use, that region, those people refer to themselves in many of their writings. And of course, these we're speaking about by like the Tigra, even later on the Amhara, and those who did ascribe to this uh, Judeo, we could say Christian, the, the Queen of Sheba, King Solomon, sort of a connection, right? Because there's other peoples. We're not neglecting the other peoples, but this is, we can say, the, um, the, the culture, right? The culture that has shaped, right, what we know of Ethiopia until even the 20th and coming, I guess, into the 20th century. But the godless and creeping coup against the conquering line, the tribe of Judah, the king of kings of Ethiopia really changed things. That's a whole other particular matter right there. So what we're showing you here, right, this is another area to go to as well. We're going to pick up on this a little bit more. The old name for Ethiopia. This is not true. The old name from the European perspective. So Abyssinia is the old name from the European perspective because it was a former name from the Arabic speaking and the Arab and Islamic influence perspective, right, in that particular region of the world. But at the same time, we have the same people writing of themselves and even others writing of themselves, right, writing of them. Right? So we have them writing of themselves at this very same time in the 1630s. We can prove to you that the people in that region that's known as Ethiopia today refer to themselves as Ethiopians. They understood the term Habisha, right? that others refer to themselves as Habisha. Like we as black people, black Americans or so-called African Americans know that people call us, call us niggas. Right? Or they call us a whole bunch of things. Some say Bantu, some say this, that. We might ascribe to it or we might disascribe to it. So we're going to get a little bit more into this in the 20s and 30s, popular as a slang pun, because it was even a slang to the Ethiopians then. Now, modern Ethiopians take it a little more seriously because like black people, we take this like the nigga, nigga, my nigga thing also. It's very, very similar. I know some get offended, but the truth is an offense, not a sin. In the popular 20s and 30s, popular... 20s and 30s popular as a slang pun for the parting salutation, I'll be seeing you. See, this is the 20s and 30s because of what Haile Selassie and what was going on, Rastafari, other things that was going on in the 20s and 30s, the Ethiopian um, Hebrews, Royal Order, the Ethiopian Hebrews, other significant movement of black peoples, namely and mainly here in these here Americas, black Americans and so-called African Americans, or as they would refer to themselves as some as Ethiopian Hebrews, or the Ethiopian connection was brought forward more in the Abyssinian sense. So a lot of writing that we received over here as black people and our black scholarship and the consciousness, so to speak, community from way back then, right, understood this. But they also understood Leo Hansberry breaks that down as well. This is another very important scholar, Leo Hansberry. I don't know if ones and ones don't hear these so-called black scholars because they avoid the Ethiopia. They go along with the Roman thing more so that's why the africa thing becomes they keep pushing the africa thing that's a political fiction yes it's what's recognized today but it's a name imposed right on the continent and the peoples that we currently are in a mode of accepting more or less right related abyssinian 1620s as a breed of domestic cat 1876 in Early use, also Abyssin. This is like more of a, even the French, the French connection. So we know that the Europeans refer to them as Habash, right? Which means to be mixture. You can see the Amharic derives it from the Arabic because we don't have any verb from the Gutas that uses that same, that comes from another. Now, the Semitic languages are very interesting. Semitic languages, to liken in the easiest sense, is like English in England, right? And then you have American English, 
then you have Caribbean English, and then you have other pidgin forms of English, creole forms of English of other people. This is how the Shemitic language goes too. And if you can't see that particular view, then a lot of things that you are holding as true, right? You would not be able to see what is the lie or what are the half truths and put it into a better perspective. I know a lot of people are going to still say it's Abyssinia, not Ethiopia. Ethiopia is Greek. That means everything just kind of went over, right? Now, this is one of the reasons why many of the Ethiopians themselves, right, from back in those days rejected it. Even today, those who know. Because the Abyssinia, the name Abyssinia is derived from the Arabic word Habesh, which means mongrel. Because the Ottoman Turks were on a conquering mission and they were able to conquer various areas of the Horn of Africa, right? They displaced people or enslaved people, made a lot of eunuchs out of the Ethiopian men, raped a lot of the women, so forth and so on. And this is where this mongrelization happened. And this also played an important role in shifting the internal politics in Ethiopia among those people who had Solomonic, Davidic, Queen of Sheba claims more into the South and the further encounters with other peoples that are called even the Oromos to this very day. So some stuff is going on over there. We, we, we don't want to go into the details of that because that's like their own business. Like when we're talking about black people over here and the white man, some Africans talking some things to a certain extent, they should fall back on it. So likewise, we don't want to go into that, but just give an overview, right? So this mongrel term, this mixture term, right? This is also another area called incredible sources, right? And this is very, very credible sources. I'm not sure if it has a pejorative. It did have a pejorative meaning, especially to those Ethiopians in the know. It's like those who know, black people who know, we might avoid certain things. Amongst our black people who might be still in ignorance about some things, they don't avoid it. So they, it's like the term nigger and negro. Right? It's like the term nigger, especially. Even, we don't say nigger, but nigger. It's the same connection there, right? But at the present time, right, but it has something common to hear the expression habesh rabesh, habesh hanish in Arabic. So, so those who, even those who were able to understand the other surrounding peoples, remember Ethiopia was like a sea of Judeo-Christianity, right, in this, some say paganism, but also the mongrel, Mohammedan influences that were going on. So in Arabic, habesh garbage, habesh snake. This is important to understand, right, called historical. Right, Abyssinian in English, Habesh in Amharic, Habesh in Arabic is a well known quote historical country recognized by the neighboring countries, Arabs and Europeans. Well, the Europeans are not neighbors. So I show you that the Europeans got it from the Arabs and they put it into their writing. And this is what many ones and ones can cite. Right now, this is an interesting article here. We just put that on the screen right here. We would actually call it um, Ethiopia to Abyssinia. And again to Ethiopia again. That's the real so-called chronology, right? Multum and Parvo, right? Now this is that rejects Arabic, you know, um, learning. Let's point that out right there, you know. And one might say I'm biased to this. No, it's not biased. It's just having an inside understanding to this. You know what I mean? Because being able to speak to people, understand people, we understand these particular terminologies. So many might use this term today without that older reference, like we use the term nigger today. So the term habesh is habesh, right? Martin for nigger. That might be a good subtitle right here, here, here for this one right here. We'll get into a little bit more of this right here. You know, because this is important to understand, you know, how these particular terms and terminologies, right? So Abyssinian, right? Notice Abyssinian is, is termed, remember, that's back in the 16-something, was 16-17-something. So these are all later-day terms, right? And when it first comes into the European understanding, it's roughly around the late 1500s and into the 1600s period of time. Right? When they started to identify uh, uh, Abyssinia, 
right? And then we get European writings from those early 400 year period ago, right? But notice at these very same time, we still have a very literate internal Ethiopian culture and their writing. And then we can prove whether they, they understood the term Abyssinia and Habasha, right? But they took it, many of the learned and scholars understood it as a pejorative and as a byproduct of people trying to conquer and colonize them, right? You know, so some still had a fond, you know, like the Stockholm thing, like the nigga. We say nigga, what's up my nigga, 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 you know, and we try to justify, say naga, the naga is with the nigga, you know, and, and niggas is with the nigga. You know, we, we go through all these gymnastics, right, because... You know, all these pseudo gymnastics, right? Because we don't really have the discipline of linguistics. When we do, we'll recognize how faulty much of that is. And hopefully this will be like a first, you know, shot across the, 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 the bow, so to speak, right? Short-haired breed of African origin having brownish fur and a reddish undercoat. So when they say African origin, we know this is the 400 years. This is all a byproduct of 400 years. In term, Africa, right, is almost on the same level as the term nigger, nigger, because these are terminologies that were imposed for pejorative and deceptive, let me point it out, pejorative and deceptive reasons. So we're going to seal up right here, pick up with this a little bit more, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, you know, from it's Ethiopia to Abyssinia, and then again to Ethiopia again, but Abyssinia is not ancient name of Ethiopia. It's, it's not, or Abyssinia is not Ethiopia. It's not the ancient name, right? And the whole Habesha thing, Habesha is another N-word. It's another way of bringing out the whole N-word thing. If we understand and put it into the proper historical context, right? We know this about the N-word, and yet many of us still use the N-word because there is that kind of familial use. But if we're now going to point out, you know, whether it is a accurate nomenclature. No, it's a, it's a white people imposed nomenclature that we were able to kind of use, you know, in our own ways. But ultimately, it belongs in the garbage bin, right? It's just a matter of, you know, using it as a tool as many of us use it, but don't be no fool to really think that's who we are, right? Because real Ethiopians are not a fool to really understand that Abyssinia. But if they have the Arabic Islamic connection, as many modern Ethiopians do, you're going to hear them champion that particular view. But now we gave you some of the basics of where the word derives from. Right. If we study the history of the cultures and as the history of the region, then it puts it all into context. So, Baruch Hashem, give thanks, WMS Gan. Anyway, we will move forward right here. Here, here, Rasa Adonis Tafari Yadin, right here. We approve of this, you know, vlog right here. Abyssinia is not Ethiopia, right? Ancient name. It's not Ethiopia, ancient name, and Habasha. Right is 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 another is Habasha another N word. Get into that a little bit more. Also, Africa, Africa, you know, Egypt was not in Africa at one time. We want to get into that one a little bit more as well. But anyway, Shalom Habarim, Shalom. Check out, subscribe here if you will. L O J S dot O R G. Check out the website. Subscribe here. Also check out the live streaming on the Rastafari Israelites. Hopefully we'll get into the prime time mode as the spring and summer comes into view. Have a lot of presentations from other scholars within our Rastafari conscious community to bring forward right here on this and that platform on the L O J platforms on the line of Judah L O J. Society of His Majesty. Shalom Chabarim. Shalom Baruch Hashem.